I would like to say a few words about the tools which I'm using to build my RV-10 airplane. So, well, uh, first of all, I would like to mention the experimental Aero DRDT2 dimpling machine, like dimpler, dimpler. Well, I read lots on forums and I uh, watched a couple of video, a few videos and uh, the people gave a very good feedbacks about this um, dim dimpler so I decided to purchase one. It is expensive but I'm sure it's gonna do a right job for me. And the main advantage of this tool is that it simplifies dimpling. So basically you move your aluminum part and you just dimple the holes right away like that. So basically this stays on the same place while you're just moving apart and dimpling. And the advantage is that your tool stays on the same place, like if it's quite heavy, so it doesn't move. So you can adjust your material, your part, and dimple at the same time. Uh, where I found uh, uh, what's missing on this part, what needs to be done, and actually that's what many people recommend on VAF forums, uh, is just to make some sort of the bed here, which should be wrapped in the carpet just for simplification because otherwise you have to uh, move your, your part and if, you're, if you don't put your part, if you don't align your part uh, in parallel with, the, um, with, with this part of the dimpler, well you're probably not going to dimple a uh, right hole, like you don't, your dimpling, your whole, whole dimpling won't be nice. So you have to have something flat here on the level of the um, socket of the, um, of the dimpler and that will let you make them work nice. So I will take care of that because I'm actually approaching the point when I will be in need of this machine just very soon. I'm already at page 6.3. Next. Uh, of course, uh, I have a conventional type of the uh, uh, dimpler tool, like the uh, dimples. Those ones are needed for the holes where I cannot reach with the dimpler. And plus, I probably will be using a manual dimpler just for the cases where again this uh, dimpler cannot reach. Next is the pneumatic squeezer. Well, basically this is again expensive tool. It's, I would say, a very expensive tool and probably this one is even more expensive than the dimpler, but it really simplifies the life. I tried to use it, but not, not for the rivets, just, just to see how it works and I found, well, it's amazing. It's just basically a manual hand press, you know, which works uh, from the air. It's very nice to work and to basically put the rivets in any location where you can reach. So basically that's going to be your distance from the edge. If that is not possible, if this tool cannot be used, the, your other solution is basically to use the bucking bars and rivet gun. Well, that's what I have. So I have a rivet gun. I'm not sure about this um, model though. I tried, I tested it, but I found that there is some air leaking from the bottom. I can hear that. And I have a strong feeling that this um, rivet, um, this rivet gun may have some issues. So I have to retest it. I have something, some similar in another one, but uh, I will test it first. And by the way, here I have a regulator for the pressure, pressure regulator, which can regulate how strong and how fast I want this uh, dimpling uh, gun to, to work. That's very important. Those are my bucking bars. I have two more. I know that there cannot be enough bucking bars because they are always in need. I have air drill, which I mentioned in one of my previous videos. I love very much. I love to use um, air instruments like air tools. So this air drill is nice, very light and easy to use. For my rivet gun, I have all sorts of all sorts of the heads like for the for the riveting. So I have those ones, those ones. I have a different ones, and uh, I'm not yet at riveting, so I will still have to learn it, that curve, that part, and I will see how I'm going to be using those uh, tools. I even have a 
um, uh, air clicker removal tool. Well, not sure if I really need that, but that was the part of my deal, like when I was uh, purchasing my tools. And uh, well, so far I'm using the manual clicker tool, but I guess maybe when it's like large amount of clickers needs to be removed or installed, I probably removed. I probably want to use the air one. I will see. Not sure yet if I really want to use it. Well, of course I have a holy bearing tool. That's simple, nice and easy to use one and uh, I like it. It's quick and easy. Well, yeah, you have to move your hand a lot, but it's nice and easy to use. I have a whole deburring tool with a different uh, heads, so which I use with my air tool. Nice and again easy to use. I still have to figure how to adjust it. I mean, no, I, I understand how to adjust it. I did some manual adjustments, but I just have to probably Google and see how to adjust in accordance with those numbers on the side, which is 25 from 0 to 30 basically. So it's I guess I guess it's uh, the the deep right the how deep it's gonna go in. Uh, for now I do it manually by testing and seeing when the rivet is flat with the surface but probably I can go with those numbers without a mistake. Well that's basically it and of course I have uh, all kinds and all uh, uh, like sorts of drill drilling bits. I have a different uh, for hole deburring uh, different heads here. I have this type of drilling bit. So basically that's a Find a common set of tools which you need for assembly of the airplane. I'm sure that I will need more tools, but for now that's mainly all my hand tools. Uh, on that side I have the basically the um, uh, motorized uh, deburring tool, uh, like that machine on the corner. Uh, vice, again I have on, on the corner of my table I have a vice, which sometimes may be needed. And the last two things I have is the Ryobi drilling station and Ryobi bandsaw, which again I already tried to use and uh, I said a few words about it before, but make sure that you have the saw blade here for aluminum, because by default it comes with the one for the wood and the wooden one will not work well for the aluminum. Another moment is make sure you understand how to adjust it. Because, for example, my um, saw for aluminum, which I use, is um, has a like less depth versus the one for the wood. So you have to adjust some screws here, you have to push it this way to ensure it's properly installed, so it's gonna make a proper work. 